Jamie Ryder. Something I believe in is gender equality, and I live through that by going to women's rights protests. Hi, my name is Owen. I believe in the freedom of expression, and I've lived with it in my life by expressing myself the way I want to, and not putting others down for the way they express themselves. Hi, I'm Chole, and something that I believe in is love, and I live it by caring for my friends. Hi, Eric, and one thing I believe in is the power of words. I love words by speaking up for what's important to me. Hi, I'm Atticus and I believe in kindness. I love this by being kind to people that I love. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mason Waller, and something that I believe that I live is that everyone's entitled to their own beliefs as long as these beliefs respect everyone. I live this by wanting to learn more and by respecting everyone's beliefs, even if they are different from mine. Good morning, everyone and welcome to worship at First Unitarian Church of Rochester. Our mission is through spiritual connection and community. We listen deeply to others and ourselves, open to wonder and transformation and serve together in love and humility. We acknowledge with respect the Seneca Nation, keepers of the Western door and part of the Haudenosaunee people on whose ancestral lands First Unitarian now stands. Leading worship today are my COA group, Sheila, Wayne, Sherry and Joe and Caesar on music. Behind the scenes, our tech team, our ushers and greeters, and so many others that make things happen so we can come together today. It's not Sunday morning without all of you, especially our family and friends who also may be online with us. Please shout hello in the chat and let us know where you are coming from. We are grateful to welcome our sibling congregation, Holman Memorial Universalist Church, today as well. If you're new or newish here, we can help you connect within this community. Use the link in the chat so we can help you go deeper. If you're going through a hard time or if you're worried about someone else, chat with our chat chaplain online or reach out to our pastoral care team here after church. Today's announcements. Stick around after the service to connect with others, to meet new people, and to share your experience of our service, either online in a breakout room or out here in front at church. Next week, our youth group celebrates their graduating seniors in a UU bridging ritual, so please come back. And last but not least, you might notice a few different things about our service today. Along the line of our monthly theme of cultivating wild tenacity, the service is a little off the beaten path of a regular format, so please join in and enjoy the journey with us. And in case you are wondering, each of us has a wild accessory that speaks of our self-expression. So let's take a centering breath together. Please join me in our chalice lighting and saying the unison words that we use in our religious education. And then again in ASL with Eris. Said this is Life a is a gift 
for which we are grateful to gather in community to celebrate the glories and mysteries of this great gift. We invite you now to join us to rise in voice, body, or spirit as we sing Gathered Here. For this song, you need a neighbor or something to connect your body with as part of the interdependent web of life, like an elbow, shoulder, the earth below you, or your pet. Do what works for you and is within consent. Just follow us. It's easy to catch. There were only a few rules regarding what we discuss at my dinner table. No party humor because we are eating and that is disgusting. No discussing medical issues because there are some phobias within our family regarding that issue. No discussing any issues that disturb people. These rules aren't always respected that well and they can cause some issues. However, they all exist for a reason. They exist to help protect people's boundaries so that everyone feels comfortable at the table. These are the only rules that we have at my table, unless I'm forgetting something, which is very possible. Other than that, we can discuss pretty much everything. We can have important political and ethical discussions, not just at the table, but throughout the day. What I really appreciate about these discussions is that there's no one side or one right opinion. I am free to hold my own opinion about life and its complexities, regardless of whether it aligns with my parents' beliefs and values. I personally believe that it's very important to have open discussion within a family. I can think of at least one relationship that I have where discussion can be very closed, and it leads to an unhealthy relationship where very few problems actually get solved. In some families, parents force their beliefs and values onto their children without letting them explore who they are and what they believe because the parents want to control who their children are. Their children are not their parents and the children should never have to be their parents. Everyone has their own value and their own truth. By trying to make them like you, and not letting them figure out for themselves who they are and what they believe in, you're dis disrespecting their own inherent worth and dignity. The range of beliefs, ideas, and values that a person can have is practically limitless. Some people believe that there is one supreme God who rules over the universe. 
Some people believe in a wide range of gods that govern reality. Some people believe in other forces. And some people don't believe in any of those things. The same can be said of many other beliefs, such as the meaning of life, what happens to us when we die, or even whether there are more wheels or doors in the world. But none of these beliefs are inherently better or superior compared to the rest. All beliefs that don't cause harm or suffering, promote hate or intrude on other beliefs are valid and should be respected. Ultimately, everyone believes what they believe and while other people can absolutely contribute their opinions and share their ideas and beliefs respectfully, no one has the right to force their beliefs on other people or shame other people for how they view the world and themselves. It is important to find out who you are and what you believe in without other people determining what's right for you and what you should believe. On our coming of age trip to Boston, we visited King's Chapel. Founded in 1686, it was the first Anglican church in New England, and in 1785, it became the first congregation to officially accept Unitarianism in America. While there, we learned about their congregation's history, and one thing that really interested me was the debate over the governor's box. They don't have chairs like we do here at church. They have original box views. Families would pay a yearly rental fee for them and could decorate the pews to their liking. Their high walls kept out the drafts and helped retain the heat from the small foot stoves that families would bring to church with them. The most famous box pew in the church that we saw was the governor's pew or governor's box. Once reserved for the royal governor of the colonial days and his family. Over the years, the presence of this box sparked a debate among members of King's Chapel about whether this reflected their UU values. At one point, it was even removed, then later put back. The discussion was, from one side, is it fair to have a special box dedicated to someone who doesn't even attend the church anymore? It can convey that because that person has power, they should be treated better than others. On the other side of this discussion, people wanted the history and the achievement of the governor attending their church to be celebrated. Having a governor attend was a source of pride, and the box was an outward way to preserve their historical worship space, even as UUism has changed. I invite you now, if you are here in the sanctuary, to turn to someone near you and share your perspective on this. If you are online, share and listen using the chat. All right, not to cut your conversation short, but now we'd like to give a gift to the eighth graders. Now that our group is moving on up, we'd like to pass on something to the eighth graders that are entering coming of age. If there are eighth graders here, would you come up? Hi. Each year, coming of age pass leaves a painted rock at Walden Pond and takes one to paint and pass on to the people in coming of age next year. Now, as we leave behind a part of our youth, we'd like the people taking our place to take this rock and pass on to the generations after them.
Each week, members and friends generously contribute to our offering, which helps to sustain and grow our community. This collection supports the work and witness of our church, and each week we give half of this collection to a partner organization helping those in need and working to create a more just and loving world. This week we are sharing the plate collection with Gateway Music Festival. Gateway Music Festival aims to be a multifaceted resource primarily for classical musicians of African descent here in Rochester and a source of inspiration, enlightenment and engagement, especially communities underrepresented in classical music. You can give online at rochesterunitarian.org slash donate or by Venmo or here on our baskets. Our offering will now be received with gratitude. Peacock's Pride. After killing a powerful viper who had been terrorizing the bird community at the waterhole, Peacock spent all his time strutting around, gazing adoringly at his reflection in the water. Why should I have to do anything for myself, he thought. After all, I am now king. Peacock said, Mina, from now on you must preen my feathers until they shine. And Dove, you must fan me with your wings so I stay dry and comfortable. Now, all of this oppressive ordering went on for some time until one day while Peacock was parading along the forest path, the other birds gathered at the banyan tree. Sandgrass said, Peacock allows us to drink only when he is away from the waterhole. And Dove added, he makes me bring him all his food. I have no time to sit on my eggs. And Mina said, he's as bad as old Viper was. While they were talking, Cole, known as the Nightingale of India, came to the waterhole and overheard their conversation. 
He was a plain black bird with no distinguishing features, timid. Usually he kept to himself. Excuse me, said Cole, but I know how to solve this problem. We must teach Peacock a lesson. We must challenge the power of his great beauty with something even more beautiful. If you like, I will make this challenge. Miner tried hard to be kind. I don't mean to be rude, he said, staring at the shy bird with its dull coat and thin tail. But what makes you think you can solve our problem? Paul said, I have a plan. I know a great deal about peacocks. That afternoon, Cole approached the peacock. You have the most beautiful feathers I have ever seen, and I'm wondering if I too have a gift equal to your beauty. As Peacock stared at the creature, he could hardly suppress his laughter. Cole asked, would you agree to give up your kingdom if I can prove my beauty is every bit as great as yours? Peacock smiled. Well, of course. How could you, a small grab looking bird, ever hope to match my splendor? Just like this. Immediately, Cole wrapped to the branch of the banyan tree and sang. His voice was so clear and sweet, its notes so thrilling, that all the forest grew still. Even Peacock was surprised at the grace and beauty of Cold's song. Peacock said, You indeed possess a remarkably lovely voice, and I admit that it is beautiful as my feathers, but I have a voice too, and I'm sure that my song will be every bit as wonderful. Cole smiled confidently, but the other birds were worried. They had never heard Peacock sing, so they did not know what to expect. Since Peacock was so much more beautiful than they, surely his voice must be equally astounding. Peacock took a breath, tilted his head, and sang. <laughs> <laughs> he yelled, as if in terrible pain. The other birds covered their ears. Peacock knew he had been defeated. Slowly he folded his magnificent feathers until the shivering blue-green fan disappeared. Cole said, you're indeed uniquely beautiful, but each of us is special in our own way. And that's how the peacock came to drag his chain of feathers behind him, no longer blinded with pride. <laughs> As in the story, no one of us should hold all the power and think we are all that. Each one of us has the responsibility to keep ourselves in a relationship, not off by ourselves as if we have all the answers, and don't need others in the process of developing our best selves. I think no matter where you are in your life or what you believe, you should always have at least one person that helps you figure out your beliefs or is helping you figure out your beliefs. I think this person should push you to try new things and sometimes even put you in uncomfortable situations where you have to adapt to overcome. These people could be anyone and at any time. It could be someone you saw on TikTok who gave you a one-time inspiration and you will never see them again. Or it could be a lifelong friend who has been with you for as long as you can remember. I think having a person like this is so important because they have an outside perspective of you and can help you become a better person in ways that you wouldn't be able to do yourself. Many of us can also become complacent and it is always beneficial to have people who will keep you striving for better. For me, it always been, has always been my family, my parents, grandparents, and sister. My parents have been the ones to force me to try new things and to do things that I didn't want to do. Sometimes that was forcing me to come to church when all I wanted to do was lay in bed. Or I threw fits because I said I didn't have anything to wear. Or maybe it was to go outside and enjoy nature when all I wanted to do was watch YouTube. Whatever it was, they showed me how to be open to new things, no matter if you would like it or not. Through their actions, my grandparents taught me how to have faith in something, whether that was God, the goodness of people, and that they can become better, 
or that the Golden State Warriors would stop playing sloppy and win the NBA championship. <laughs> My sister showed me how to be resilient, fight for change in the world where it's most needed, and to not give up on yourself through hard times and failures. Through watching all these people and asking questions, I have learned about myself and been able to see things from new perspectives and angles. They have shown me that you can always become a better you and to never stop trying to be that version of yourself. One thing we did this year in COA was to address a personal challenge through the obstacle project. I did not choose to make a physical copy or type an essay. Instead, I chose to do something a little different. I asked some of, my, some of the aforementioned people in my life their opinions, strategies, and advice about how to deal with my obstacle, which was lack of motivation. I decided to do this because I think one of the best ways to get through things is by talking them out. Getting advice from people who are wiser and have more experience than me seemed to be the best way to go about getting through this obstacle. Choosing to do my project in this way allowed me to be more open and connected to the people around me. It also helped me to embody the DU principles in a new way. One of the central values that I live is affirming that we all have to come up with our own beliefs. And they can always change no matter if it's daily changes or over the course of your life. It also is completely okay to not know what you believe or what you are about. When we can open ourselves up to change and stay open with other people, there's a lot more room for growth and acceptance and a lot less judgment on ourselves and others. So I ask you all to be more open and connect with someone in your life. Please join me now in a time of reflection followed with silence and the holding of our community cares. Find a position that works for you wherever you are, here or, or wherever you are, and be with your breath. Let me make the songs for the people. Songs for the old and young. Songs to serve like battle, like a battle cry. Wherever they are young, song. Not for the clashing of sabers, or for the carnage, nor for strife. But songs to thrill the hearts of all with more abundant life. Let me make the songs for the weary amid life, fever, and fret, till hearts shall relax their tensions and careworn brows forget. Let me sing for the children before their footsteps stray, sweet anthems of love and duty to float for life's highway. I would sing for the poor and the aged when sh shadows dim the sight of the bright and restful mansions where there shall be no night. Our world, it's so warm and weary, needs music pure and strong to hush the jangle and discords of sorrow, pain, and wrong. Music to soothe all its sorrow, till war and crime shall cease, and the hearts of all grown tender, riddle the world with peace. After listening to these words, let us reflect on the words we make songs for the people. Let us now enter into ritual to bring what is heaviest on our hearts or most present in our mind and spirit this morning and to lay it on the altar of community, honoring the complexities of life, our grief, our growth, and the gratitude alive in each of us. 
Online, you are invited to share in the chat, and in the sanctuary, you are invited to light a candle of witness, extinguishing the taper with the snuffle. May we now share in this ritual of community. All that we hold in our hearts, for ourselves, for each other, and for the world, is now held by the larger love which holds us all. May your life flow on its journey through the changes and the challenges as ours has this past year. May it be so, blessed be. Storm can shake my inmost heart, but to that rock I'm clinging, since the prevails in heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing?
I don't really know all of what I believe. It's complicated. But I do know what is most central to my UU faith are two things together, beauty and power. Beauty to me is rain, my friends, love, nature, art, family, community, and much more. To you, this may be different, but as long as you're not hurting anyone with your beliefs, you can believe there is beauty in anything, like chickens or light, or just living things in general. The second thing I believe in is power. Power can be defined by some as having an advantage or being in charge or even money. That's not the kind of power I'm talking about. I believe that we are all equal in power. We just have different ways of showing it. So nothing has less or more power. It just kind of cancels out. The way everyone chooses to use their power is completely up to them. But sometimes it's unfair to others, which I don't think is right. I know that I'm somewhat agnostic and I'm at peace with knowing. This peace comes from knowing that I am safe and I am well, and I don't have to believe in a higher power to feel this way. I can create my own hope in other things like my relationships with others. I can believe in what I want and force it and not force it on others. I am glad I have shared this with you and you have listened so kindly, whether you agree with me or not. We feel power and beauty in our bodies. 
and through our senses. What is so cool about community is that we can experience these both separately and all together at the same time. Would you rise in voice, body, or spirit and join me, whether you are at home in your car or here, in moving your body, however little or a lot, however wild or not, to feel power in yourself with others, feel beauty in yourself or with others. Without shame and without holding back, know you are held here in love. As our congregation's religious educator, I give witness to the truth that what we do in RE is only part of what nurtures a child's religious identity over time. The primary religious educators of these teens are the adults in their lives who have committed themselves to bringing up their children in this faith tradition. So I'd invite the parents forward. Parents of these coming of age youth, you too are coming of age today. Your promise to your teen and dedicating them in this religious community is in part complete. You have, along with our support, tried to provide for them the gift of a liberal religious upbringing in all that you have done. You have lived as an example of this faith for them in the way that you have created your households, the priorities you've set in your families, the experiences that you have shared with them, and the difficult decisions that you've made in teaching your UU values along the way. What courage and steadfast faith that you have shown in the face of so many parenting challenges of today's world, especially this past year or years. We should give them a round of applause, actually. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, it, is, it is most fitting then that the real passage to a UU faith to your children be marked by you. Teens, you are invited one by one to light a smaller chalice from your parents to symbolize your commitment to continue to grow this light of our faith in your own life to listen, to open, and to serve. Don't worry, you are not alone. Your loved ones have prepared a secret collection of letters from those closest to you to remind you of this and to give you wisdom. 
As each teen's name is called, I'd ask any relatives, close friends, or RE guides and community members who have been part of their growing up to reach out your hands towards the screen if you're online, or rise up in body or with hands here to offer a special blessing when I call their name. Atticus Buck. Eleanor Gall. Eris Hall. Sole Kitwana. Jamie Ryder. Mason Waller. We have a tradition here in this community of welcoming babies and young children, dedicating them into our faith community. At that time, we commit ourselves to being the village that it takes to raise them. You are no longer babies and small children. But it's our tradition here to recommit, not only to celebrate their accomplishments, which are many over the past year, but to remind these young people that we, the village, still have their backs. We know that being a teen can be difficult. Navigating the culture around them means that sometimes you and all of us will make some serious mistakes. We will not 
forsake you. As each of you greet these coming of age participants at coffee hour or in the chat, I invite you to share your personal blessings to encourage them. So will you now rise in voice, body, and spirit and join me in recommitting to these youth as they come of age by shouting an enthusiastic yes, if you agree. We as a community of faith recognize the commitment that these youth have shown in coming of age this year. Do we pledge to support their ongoing spiritual development and cherish them? Do we as a community of faith take seriously their place in a long stream of Unitarian Universalists who have come through this way? Do we commit to supporting them in living mindfully and loving faithfully as they navigate the world? Yes! yes. In, our, <clears throat> in our interactions with them, do we pledge to be transformed through and work towards mutual liberation by listening, opening, and serving every day. As a sign of our promise, our congregation blesses you with each with a chalice, a sign of our living tradition and symbol of our beloved community and its strength, compassion, and joy. Wear this close to your heart that you, are, you know that you are forever welcome in this circle. Also a little surprise, you may be seated. We thought that anybody who could complete 25 lessons of our whole life sexuality education during a pandemic, that's a pretty amazing thing. As well as having your two facilitators since you were fifth grade, in fifth grade. So they're facilitators, are they here now? State, Stephen and Sarah, are you here? No, I don't see them. So we're offering you all a pair of owl socks in the hopes that you would continue to move through the world with responsibility, healthy relationships, and respect. Would you join us now in voice, body, and spirit and rise up and sing along with Lean On Me.
We extinguish this flame, but not the truth of life, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. All right. Go now from this service with the hope that we youth have hopefully given you and give it to others. Go now with the knowledge that you will be supported and sometimes challenged in this community with your beliefs. And most importantly, go with the knowledge of how to cultivate wild UU tenacity. Now, as we did at the beginning of the service in our intro videos, We'd like you to share something you believe in as well. But since our theme of today is being wild, we don't want you to have any regrets. In instead, be impulsive and scream it out loud. On the I invite you to rise in voice, body, or spirit, whether you're in person or online, and think of one thing you firmly believe in. On the count of three, Express that thing that is super important to you by screaming, I believe in, is everybody ready? Yeah. One, two, three. We could do that again, come on. You guys can do better, yeah. We gotta be more wild and tenacious. Okay, is everybody ready? One, two, three. That was great. Have a nice day, you guys. Thanks for coming.